Hello, everybody. I bet you thought she's not coming today. I'm tired, but I'm back home and I had a good time and uh, it was a good thing. So how are all of you? Oh my gosh, look at all these people. So good to see you. Jody, hello, Marsha, Charlene Piper. Hi, hon. Dolores is on. Hi, our Dolores. Cheryl Hogan, Debbie, Polly, Mary. Oh, this is so great. This is so great. Ah, the winter landscape. Okay. It's so funny. I have been so sleepy since I got home. All I want to do is sleep. And uh, I told Mark tonight, oh, I'm not up to a show. And somehow I pulled a muscle in my rib trying to put the heavy cases in and out of the car. Even though I tried really hard not lifting things too heavy, it wasn't easy. But anyway, but I do, I did, I'm here, a little bit tired, but I'm here. And I did draw a pattern. And for anybody that wants the pattern, I'm going to scan it into my computer. It's going to be six pay regular pages, and it has marks where you'll know where to tape it together, and you'll have the pattern. So I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it. Well, not very well. I may have to, I may have to draw it a little darker first. Let me see, if I put a white piece of paper behind it, will it show better? Because I always do my sketching with pencil, so it's easier to erase. But then sometimes, oh man, I don't think you're seeing that much. But what it's got, it's got a cabin here. It's got a tree stump with snow piled high. It's got some small little like scrub maples. It's got big pines here. It's going to have a pale blue sky with a little bit of an orange pinky sunset over here. It's got two good sized oak trees right beside the cabin. Over here in the front, it's got a little piece of the stream, a weeping willow here, and the pretty sky over here. So let me see if I can bring it a little closer. So you can see, I had to put some of those wonderful pines in it because when you put the wonderful pines, they're just so much fun to do. Then let me put the paper behind the cabin. I'm hoping you can see this. I'm not sure how well you can see it. There's the cabin. And... Here are the little shrub trees. And then here are two tall oaks with a birdhouse on them. Here is the little creek right here with a little weeping willow hanging over it. And then I forgot the front bottom is a fence. And on the fence, I've got a cardinal. So, all right. So what you're going to do is you can either draw your own. I My feelings won't be hurt at all. Or you can download. I'll send you the pattern by email. If you belong to our site, I'll put it on our site. And you can draw it. Now, just to let you know, if you don't, this one's 18 by 25. If that's too big for you, don't worry. Because what you can do is take that drawing and, and fold it into 16 pieces. And then by printing it out, taping the sheets together, then folding it into 16, putting the tape on the back, 16 pieces. And then you can downsize it, whatever you're going to draw it down on, have it in 16 squares or rectangles. And then only draw what you see in that one box on the drawing into the size you want and that will help you downsize it so you can see some of the cabin the cabin shows best yes so if i have a chance 
I will draw it out darker too so that you can see it. Um, I was thinking when I put it on the printer, I can always print it dark, but I think it'd be good for me too to see it better. I wanted to show you this. This is that golden threads paper, and this one's 18 by 20 yards. I realize now called quilting paper, but golden threads, golden threads quilting paper. And I love it because it's a good paper that you can draw through. If you wanted to cut it in sizes for your printer, you can print on it and use it for paper piecing. I think it's a little thin for paper piecing. I'm not sure how my printer would do with it. But you can also, for those of you who are afraid to buy something like this, because you're going to say, well, how many times am I going to draw landscapes? You can also take it, sew on it without a thread in your needle, and sew a quilting pattern that you would like to put on your quilt. And then when you sew it, it'll leave little holes in this. And then you can take and pounce that powder, the chalk powder on it to get your quilting design. So it can come in pretty, pretty handy. Or you can print the design on here or draw the design, pin it to the quilt, and use that as your template for whatever, um, ex, you know, difficult print or something. So I just wanted to show you, I like this taller size better. Because you could, it just, the other one's only about a foot, so you have to tape a couple together anyway. All right. So... I didn't get home until Tuesday at 5, so I'm still tired. Yesterday, I just didn't even want to stay awake. And the night before, the night I got home, I had driven, been in the car driving from 11 till 5. And I took a little extra time. I took a walk on the beach. And come Sunday, I'll show you some of my little treasures that I found laying on the beach and just a partial conch shell. So I will show you the video and my treasures that I found on the beach. And so I kind of took my time coming home. And uh, so that night, though, it felt like my feet and legs were vibrating from being in the car and sitting so long. So... It was awful. <laughs> I had a hard time getting to sleep. But here is the wonderful, beautiful coat. I think one of the ladies, one of the friends made it. And it's a wonderful, heavy, really nice upholstery fabric. So I really like this bag. I like it better than their others. So I'm very appreciative. And they found my hearing aid. Yay. I didn't want it. I don't think I told y'all, but that one hearing aid, when I got them about 15 years ago, that one, just that one hearing aid was $2,000 that I paid for it. Luckily, they've gotten much cheaper now, so that's why I'd like to get some new ones. And um, But hey, I got to hold on to it as long as I can. So anyway, Carolina in the Pines. Michael Murphy, ah, oh. <laughs> it's it's right pretty, so I think you'll like it. Oh no, Ma poor Mary, her internet was not streaming well. I'm sorry, sweetheart. So then, I thought I would show you how progress. I made a little bit of progress on the Alex Anderson hand embroidery. And here's how it's coming along now. And this, this vine here started going wonky. So I'm going to continue and make it look like it was supposed to be wonky. You won't tell anybody, will you? But I love how the designs show up so well when I use the various colors that come in the quilt. So I think I'm going to be very pleased with it. All right. So I got that. And I found some metallic threads and I found um, little tiny beads that I might end up mixing in some metallic threads, some beads, all of that, because I'm pretty excited to see where I end up going with that. So, but anyway, I'm tired. And how are y'all? Anything interesting? Anything 
Oh, I, thank you for wanting to tuck me in. And I've got that hammock up there. It's been calling my name all day. But I said, I'm supposed to do this show. So anyway, let me get some lemonade. I said, I need a little pick-me-up, but I didn't want, you know, I've got to lose this weight. So I didn't want to get a Coke. So I got one of those Simply Light, mostly artificial. <laughs> I can't wait to see that, Debbie. Oh, that's wonderful. I can't wait to see it. That will be terrific. So we're supposed to get some more snow tomorrow. Tomorrow around lunchtime, I'm going to head over and get my grand dog who's going to spend the weekend with me. And so I'm excited about that. And this is Miss Polly. She's a white standard poodle, so she'll be here Sunday and say hello. But um, let me see. I don't think I've got to put a few things up there. There is the mandala I painted, and Susan said she got her metallic paints in, so she's going to be doing hers soon. And then there's our last, whoops, last two Art Quilt Thursday projects. So, and then, I what did Dolores Fagan say, that dear heart? Oh, honey, I can't wait to see your eagle that you're working on. Barbara Smith is here again. Hello, Barbara. I was hoping that, oh, I do have it. The quilt, I packed up the quilt after I showed it to you on Sunday's show. And you see, I've done nothing with it, but make sure it got home safely. But, um, okay. So, I've got all the other components cut out and ready to go. It's just a matter of putting them together. And I showed you all this on Sunday. And it's going to be on a diagonal like this I believe and I can't wait to see what the teal flowers are going to look like on it but it's going to be a big one 84 by 84 now if anybody wants me to help teach them how to do this quilt I'll be happy to but you would have to buy the pattern but what I did today, too, while I was goofing off because I didn't want to come down here and do some real work, I um, I did a pattern up. And it is, I'm going to call it Scrappy Curves. And it's that very same um, template and then the piece that goes on it. But it, with the template, how I have it, is you would be taking a quarter moon, a quarter full moon, and be doing scrappy in blades. So pull your bag of scrappy out, and then you would sew a background piece to the side. And I can show you exactly how I did it. So it's not this pattern, but it's the techniques I learned with this pattern. And I'll give you my pattern for free. So I think you'll kind of like it because it'll kind of look like planets on a background. So I think that might be fun. So I will be getting that downloaded too. Oh, thank you. I had so much fun with that mandala. I'm going to try to get ready and do another one because I like having something to do in the evenings. So that will be perfect. All right. Well, while we talk, let me feel free to ask any questions, and I'm just going to try to do a little bit more drawing on this so that I can show you a better picture of it because, boy, it's not showing. So, uh, um, But that way you can kind of just chat with me, tell me what you're working on, what's going on in your life. I heard, Barbara, was it you that had the... Eight inches of snow over the week. That was a lot of snow. And I'm curious to see how much we're going to get um, tomorrow into Saturday. And um, 
But you know what? I don't have to go anywhere this time, so let it snow. Um, okay. The nice thing is, okay, you probably are wondering, how do I draw my patterns? And I'm, oh, don't let me forget. I want to show you all of the research images that I collected to do this. And um, I always like, if I can do it, to have water in the photo. And then I like to have trees and some kind of building and, some, you know, maybe the fences and all of that. And then, you know, um, I like to have something going on in the foreground something going on in the midground and the background because I want it to be an interesting object. So let me and this time when I was looking up the um, when I was looking up for my inspirations I found this cardinal, and of course, cardinals show up so pretty on the snow. So I said, I've got to put a cardinal in this. So I'm just trying to quickly do some outlining. Okay. Um... I don't know. I get uncomfortable when I'm working and facing away from you guys. So I might not draw too much of this. I feel like it's rude not to be paying attention to you. But let me just see if I can do just a few things to kind of show you. I wish I had thought of this earlier. But I didn't. It wasn't until I held it up in front of the camera and I said, oh, I think we have a problem. So, because I even drew in, I did a lot more detail with this one this time. And, but it's well numbered. And then I have something on here that you can see exactly where to put the pages together by having these cross hatches. So, and then one thing you're going to want to do is start picking out your fabrics. And don't forget that, yes, pick out some whites, but mostly pick out grays and real pale blues. Mostly pick out that because snow is rarely white. In fact, in reality, snow's clear. It just reflects what's going on around it. Okay. I'm not going to take the time to draw in the side of but when I if you want a copy of this, then I will definitely put it on dark dark so that you can see the siding. I even drew in some of the shading too. So let me finish this one little part of the roof. And then I'll show you. And when you get the pattern, it'll make a lot more sense. So don't worry. Okay. All right. Just about done with this. Let me see if you can see some of this more. There's the cabin. There are the base of the two oaks. There's the stream. There's the fencing with the cardinal. And I'll do a really quick... These spruce and pines... And they're going to be fun because we're going to, you know, maybe we'll put some fabric in some of these. But most of the trees will be thread painted on. 
And you know what I didn't think of, but I should do a deer somewhere in the background. So we'll have to remind each other to add a deer. But the only thing I've added is the um, okay. All I have added is the cardinal. So here's a little bit more that I did. So this is going to be, and then back here in the background, there's going to be, let me kind of come in here with the horizon. But here it's going to be trees, pine trees. All right. And then you're going to, so here I've got, I just drew in the horizon. And it's going to be peekaboo, see it behind these trees in the middle. But I think it gives you quite a few things to do. Kind of reminds me of some of the landscapes we did of the mountain. But this is going to be with snow. And the reason we're doing this with the snow is to help us learn how do we do snow. And snow is reflective. It's actually clear. It's reflective. So if you have some snow up near the sunset, that's what color the snow would be. Anything, anywhere where light is shining on there. This snow up here is going to be more light blue, like the sky. And here, it'll, you know, the shadows will be a gray or gray blue. And then we're, I put just a little bit of a stream in here because I want to practice on the snow bank, having that thick blanket of snow along the edge of the stream, and then doing some reflection with these little wild grasses that show and the tree that will show. So, and then this is a good place too to remember to pile up snow on top of the post and on top of the rails, okay? So it's just gonna be about, the main thing is learning color, learning reflection, because very little of the snow is truly going to be white. So make sure when you go to do any of your, make sure when you go to do any of your fabric collecting, look for light blues, look for grays, and you'll be a lot happier. So, and then it's nice to have the branches that overlay all of this. And I'm even thinking, especially when it comes to some of these pines and on the roof, I'm going to look for any white yarn, any decorative white, pale blue, gray, pale gray um, yarn, because I'm going to try to do some couching. Let's make it easy. And then for my sky, I'm going to try to find a pale blue fabric, and then I'm going to do ink tents to bring out the yellows and the pinks. I'm gonna work more with fabric painting on this one than I've done others. So, like the trunks I will do with fabric. If it's a large branch, I will do that with fabric. Otherwise, I'm gonna be using brown yarns, white yarns, green yarns. I'm gonna to try to do couching so that I'm not cutting tiny, tiny, tiny little pieces of fabric. This time I'm ready to let couching and painting and thread painting and actual ink tents painting, whatever. And if you don't have ink tents, don't worry, use crayon. So 
So I will show you, if you use crayon, then you just lay a pressing sheet over it and iron it. And when you iron it, that will, if you, if you color it very lightly, then when you iron it, the crayon should melt in and you will have a very light, nice shading. So, but all of this is the big oak trees that are in front of the skyline. So we'll work from the top down on this one. And what we're going to do is get the sky perfect like it's only the sky. Okay? And, sorry to this person. This person is not a real person. Oops. Oh, boy. Remove. Okay. Good. Got that person removed. Um, I hope our Cheryl's here. It was so good to see her for a minute. But I'm going to do the sky, which is this part right here. I'm going to work on that and get it perfect. Then the trees can go over it however they want. It's much easier doing it that way than doing your trees first and trying to get the sky just right in between. That's way too hard. So we'll do a perfect sky, and then, then we'll start on this part of the snow. Get a perfect snow, then start laying on our other trees like this. Same thing for down here. We're going to try to get our base, the snow, all laid in here, and then we'll start putting our components in it. Okay, does that make sense to you? And the nice thing for me is I, I like using this golden threads paper, paper because I can pin it on the top of my muslin. And then I can lay this down, look at it, make sure I've got things where I want, lift it back up, lay some more stuff down. And what I'm planning on using is good old muslin. This is what I'm going to use. And I'm going to start buying this by the bolt because I love doing landscape quilts. And I want to keep plenty on hand because this acts as my foundation. And then I build the landscape on top of it. So I'll use a bright window or uh, a light box and, and lay it. Lay this on the window or light box, and then lay this on top, and then it'll show through. And then I can do all my outline. So that's what we're planning on doing. And next week, I was too tired to even get my fabrics out. So, hi, Kathy Boyd. You're never late, sweetie. We're always glad to see people here. You've got lives and... You've got things to do, so you do not worry. But now you know what we're going to do. And I always get a basket, a plastic basket. Hi! It is so nice to see you. I recognize your name, Midland. I, I recognize that name. Wonderful. And I always get a plastic basket. And then I go over to my fabric stash and just start pulling. Anything I think might work, I pull. And remember, you might look at a light blue and think, but well, that's a little too dark. You never know because the color value, whatever you put something on, determines which color value is the next part. So a shadow might need a darker blue. It might need a darker gray. So have you ever heard of pattern E? I don't think I have. Can you tell us what it is? You use it for collage type work. Hmm. Yeah, I may put some interfacing, usable interfacing on the back of this. A lot of times I do, just so it gives me a nice firm um, surface to work on. But um, you're called Cass. Oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> Okay, I was a little worried. I thought, cash flow? <laughs> cash flow. But I'm glad you like the color. And hello, Midland. It is so good to see you. So, so. Oh, no. 
Oh, you know what? I didn't realize our Carol is here. She zoomed in and got the bad thing, so that was good. I didn't realize, I don't think I saw her, but if she's here, I'm so tickled. So it is so good seeing all of you. I'm excited about starting this one, and I've got a bunch of ideas for what to do for the next one. And then we've, I've got some ideas for Sunday projects. But one of the main things that I'm going to be working on along with all this is finishing some of my former landscape. And I kind of have gotten excited about quilt shows now. And I can't enter them unless I finish them. And I have a tiger. Do you remember the tiger I started a year and a half ago? I need to finish him. So let's get some, we'll pull out our former projects that we started Try to get those finished, and then we'll work on this one. There she is. You're in the background. Oh, you're so cute. It was like I didn't see her, but she got that that uh, that spammer, spammer, whatever. She zoomed in. Whoop, took care of that. So, and then I assume, Carol, you're doing more of your scroll work. I'm going to try to look for another one of these antique bobbins or spools. Because I would love to put a scroll on that and have, have that as a very special thing. And you know what I even thought for down the road, Carol, is you've given me so many ideas. When I look at Carol's work, I'm so inspired. But I was thinking, wouldn't it be great to do a quilt that has blocks in it? And in each block, you relate something about yourself. If you love gardening, then put a little vignette of gardening and little garden tools or whatever. Yeah, however many children you have, how many puppies you have. Um, things, you know, did you ever work on a political campaign or do you, does church mean a lot to you or camping? I am a camping nut. And uh, so... That's kind of neat that I was thinking it might be nice to make a little bit larger than a wall hanging with blocks that we can work on at our leisure, but that that will be something that we leave that tells people who we were and what meant something to us. What do you think of that? So, anyway, that's what put, yeah, that's what you put in your scroll. That is good. I just thought, you know, I'd like to have a quilt either in this room or my upstairs frame room that somebody walks in, they'll learn who I am. So if they want to know, they might not want to know. We see you enough on Thursday and Sunday. <laughs> so anyway, let me quickly before we go, I'm probably not going to show your work today just because I'm tired. I haven't had dinner. I'm wearing out, <laughs> but I will show. I've got some new pictures in. I can't wait to show you. So this Sunday, I will show you. Don't forget, I will have this pattern up. I I put it on our group's I.O., but if you're not a group I.O. member or you don't know how to get into the group's I.O., then do me a favor. Send me an email at our time to quilt. And that would be at pwc.com. If you send me an email, I'll shoot you right back to the pages for this pattern. And feel free to draw your own pattern. I only offer patterns so that if people are a little tense and it overwhelmed by the thought of drawing it, if you follow this pattern, then you can get to the important part which is learning to use your color, learning to, lose, to use perspective, all of that. So that's really nice. So, and I love sharing my patterns with you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is show you where I got my inspiration, and you'll get to see what I do, because I don't copy anybody's work. That's their own work. But I get inspired by it, and now I'll show you how I did it. What I use to get inspired. All right. Let's try 
turn these lights off so you can see good. And Sunday, I've got pictures to show you. I can't wait. All right. Whoops. Turn off that. Here we go. It was so nice being home to my IT man, too. I love when he can set up my camera and do it right. All right. Here we go. Whoops. Okay. Now, let me show. What I did is I went online, I went on Google, and I started looking up tranquil snow landscape. Okay? And then I just typed in snow landscape. And what if I saw something that offered something interesting? See, I like this because it's got the snow, the sunset, but it's kind of grayish blue because you know, that tends to be the color of the sky in the summer, I mean the winter. In the summer, it's a brighter blue. But then now, here's this one. Isn't that pretty? So I looked around and said, what am I willing to work on? I don't want it to be too heavy or too overwhelming. I drove past some cotton fields coming home from South Carolina today. That was a lot of fun. I do love the way these branches are in the foreground. Who knows? I might add some of that to our picture. But that's just cool. I love anything that helps you see the difference between up close and far away. Now, this is a painting. So I don't usually, that gives me an idea for how to set things up. But I really like looking for real nature. So anything that struck my fancy, I popped into this folder. And then what I did is I looked at all of these and pulled out the ones that I really thought I would use. But see how the sun sets back here and the sky is that gray blue? I love that. Yeah. That was too much water. I said, Deb, you always bite off more than you chew. But the nice thing is you can see the reflection in the water of the tree. And that's a good thing to pay attention to. I love this one. It looks like Monet's garden. No. And I, I love this because I love the grasses, the fence, pines off in the distance. This is pretty, but you would have to do it at nighttime to see the aurora borealis. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? But that made me know, yep, I want a fence in there. So when you look at, oh, I was even thinking, you know, you could do, try to pretend it's snowing. Take a, thin, a slightly thin acrylic paint and a toothbrush and flick it on when you're done. Well, that's still a thought. <laughs> okay, so I think, but I started liking the ones that had some kind of sign of human life, like a cabin. All right, so now, out of all of those, then I made a folder, and it says best snow images. Now, remember when I was showing y'all, this is Jamie, Jamie's Crafty World. It's outside of her neighborhood. I love that. And I, I saw the sweeping willow. Love that. And I love those spruce trees. So this was part of it. The fence from this one, part of it. The small creek instead of the big creek. The small creek that I used, got that inspiration from this one, and partly the sky. Then this one, the trees, those wonderful spruce trees. This one, I used these trees for some of my little shrub trees that are going to be on the side. This is the one that I would like very, whoops, whoops, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, 
this is the one I would like very much somehow incorporate something right up close to see everything from behind. So I'm still working on that. All right, I love this one. That was one of my favorites. Then this, love, love, love that sky. And notice with this one too, but that snow, there's hardly any white. It's almost all blue. But we're going to try to have more white. That's where I got the idea for the cardinal. There, that's a great idea. I looked at how these spruce grow in nature. They don't grow all bunched up. So, whoops, we go back one. There's another view of the creek and the snow piled on the bank. Then, this is what I use to get an idea of the sky and the horizon and the pines along here. That's what I chose. And then this one, I think it was just more thoughts. But, it, but now you see where I got my cabin idea. My cabin and the two trees. That's where I got that idea. So I really do. And here's where I got the idea for the burn house. So what I do, I look at all my inspiration. And then I pick and choose and compose my own landscape so that I'm not directly copying anything. Because you have to make sure it didn't have a copyright and you get their permission. So what I do is I take a look. It helps me, you know, narrow down what do I want in my composition. And by, that's why I do the research first, get them in my brain and then start my drawing and So, making sure you have inspiration is really, really important. And it's really that easy to select. So, Ruth Taylor is not Ruth Taylor, but get rid of Ruth Taylor here. Never, ever, never, ever go to any site that's just typed in like that. Unless we're talking about it, and I say, oh, we need that, you know, to Susan or Carol. But we do not go. These spammers have just been getting in. Don't trust them. So, anyway, I think that's about it for today. Once I rest my sore muscles, anybody else? Oh, my voice. Oh. Oh, Mark's going to love this. Hold on. Okay. Hello? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Mark, set my camera up. He said, when's the last time you've checked the microphone or you've changed the microphone battery? I said, well, is it working? He said, yes, but I always believe in check, you know, changing it before it goes dead on you. And I said, well, I don't. I don't want to waste any of it. I want to wait until it goes dead. Now, guess what? I'm going to have to tell him he was right. And I hate doing that. <laughs> All right. So you should be able to hear good. I had to put a new battery in the microphone. And I've got to go upstairs and tell him he was right. <laughs> oh, poo. But thank you for telling me that you couldn't hear. Did Oh, okay, good. So I hope the inspiration, did the inspiration photos kind of give you an idea and you, you see where I take, oh, an idea from this one and, oh, an idea from that one. And then I put them together and make my own world. It's one of the things I love about making landscapes. 
I get to design my own world and it can be just what I want. And it could be a candy cabin in the middle of the woods if I want it to be. So I think that was great. All right. Could you quilt tartan plaid fabric? Yes, you can. You, you, you know what I love but now about things is the sky's the limit. And I never would have thought about quilting satins or silks. But I have seen some quilts that are magical that people just did a whole cloth quilt with a satin. It was beautiful. So, still scratchy sound? Hmm. I wonder... I might have to check. Well, I've got to be going. Thank you for joining me. And I will see you all next Thursday night when we start this snowy landscape. And I'll see you Sunday where I'll give you an idea of a couple new things we might want to try. All right. Take good care. Take care of yourself. Stay safe and warm. And if you're going to get some of this snow, enjoy it because you never know when it's going to stop. Bye-bye. Thank you, Miss Carol, for being my um, for being my moderator tonight. And I can don't forget Carol's show Saturdays from 9 to 11 ish. And I think we're doing another gypsy. Well, maybe not. Maybe maybe we've done our two gypsies. Well, y'all take good care. Y'all are the best. Bye-bye. Michelle the Quilter, it's great to see you again. Thank you. Bye-bye, you guys. Dream of snow. Bye-bye. <laughs>